You're sitting there, everything's fine. Maybe you're editing a video, running a few Chrome tabs, Spotify in the background, living your best digital life. And then, boom, your entire screen goes bright blue. White text appears, a sad face. And those words you never want to see. Your PC ran into a problem and needs to restart. Your stomach drops, your heart skips a beat, and in that moment you realize your entire digital world might have just gone up in smoke. That's the blue screen of death, and yeah, it's just as dramatic as it sounds. But don't worry, today we're not running from it. We're going to trigger it on purpose, safely, and then fix it step by step. So grab your coffee, buckle up, and let's take Windows to the edge and bring it back alive. First things first, don't try this on your main computer. Remember, don't try this at home, kids. I am a professional. We're inside a virtual machine where it's totally safe to break stuff. I've already taken a snapshot so we can roll back whenever we want. So if Windows melts down, no sweat. We just rewind time like Doctor Strange. Now, let's talk about what a BSOD actually means. When you see that blue screen, it's Windows saying, Hey, I just saw something so terrifying, I'm shutting down to save you. It's basically Windows fainting. Most of the time, the cause is one of four things. Number one, bad drivers. Maybe you installed that sketchy RGB controller from 2016, or a driver from some forum with more pop-ups than answers. Number two, failing hardware. A bad stick of RAM or an SSD on its way out can throw random corruption right into system memory. Number three, corrupted system files. Maybe Windows Update failed halfway through, or you pulled the power mid-install. Yeah, it happens. And number four, software conflicts. Two kernel-level apps fighting for the same resources, like rival antivirus programs or a bad hypervisor driver. The end result? A blue screen. A cryptic stop code, and your productivity flying out the window. All right, let's break Windows. Safely. There are a few ways to do it. One is a harmless simulation that looks real. The other actually triggers a controlled crash. For our demo, we'll start safe. I've got a PowerShell script that pops up a perfect fake BSOD. Watch this. There it is. That classic blue hue. Collecting some error info, restarting for you, and that mysterious stop code, critical process died. It's all fake, but the pain feels real. Now, the cool part about this is that we can make it say anything we want. So if you like to joke around as I do, feel free to take this and make it your own. Drop a comment if you want the PowerShell code that I used to generate this. We will make this one say, buy your IT guy a coffee. Because, hey, if you're in IT, you better have a sense of humor and a coffee addiction. And there's our handiwork. Boom. Make that a... Uh, Grande, Venti, Trenta, uh, just make it a large black coffee, please. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to learn another language just to order my caffeine fix. That's probably why Starbucks is shutting down. Be sure to take note of that, so next time you catch a coworker walk away without locking their screen, you can teach them a lesson with a customized blue screen of death. That was fun, but now it's time to really crash Windows. For this, we will download a Sys Internals tool called Not My Fault. Uh, if you are not familiar with Sys Internals, you definitely should check it out. The author is a former Microsoft employee that created some of the most amazing free utilities for Windows system admins, or even just Windows users in general. Follow the link in the description to download this app. I'm going to move mine to another folder, but this step is optional. Just note the location. Before we start crashing the operating system, let's make sure we are logging it. Um, I use four PowerShell commands here to set registry values for this. Feel free to pause and jot these down if needed. The first will enable kernel memory dump. You know, the second will disable auto reboot so we can get a good look at that nasty blue screen. The third will overwrite the memory dump file each time we have a crash, giving us the latest dump data and ensuring we don't fill up the drive as these can get quite large in size. Um, the last command sets the dump file location, so if you want it somewhere else, that's where you would set that value. Now if you cannot boot into your OS because your PC blue screens while booting up, 
then you can set these remotely from a live environment by using a registry editing utility or even command line. If you need a video on that, let me know and we can put something together if there's a big enough need for it. All right, now that the groundwork is laid, let's see what we can break. Navigate to the directory where you saved Not My Fault. You will want to launch the 64-bit flavor for pretty much all modern day PCs. Once that launches, you'll see three tabs at the top. We're really just focused on the first one for today's demo, but note that there are options that can be set for hang and leak as well. For this exercise, we will create a few different crashes. After each crash, we will rename the produced memory dump file according to the crash type. This way we can look at each of them as needed. We will start with the first crash option of driver IRQL. Go ahead and hit crash and boom, instant blue screen of death. Thank me in the morning for tonight's scary dreams. Let's get the system rebooted and then we will rename that dump file according to the crash type. Okay, now that we have that done, please enjoy the music while we rinse some and repeat for a few other crash types. Now that we've got our crash, let's play detective. Because when your PC blue screens in real life, you can't just shrug and say, oh well, guess that's that. We need to grab a copy of the dump files produced by the blue screen crash. If your system will boot for long enough to allow you to copy the dump files to a USB or another location, that's going to be your easiest path. If it's blue screening almost instantly, use a bootable USB environment to access the drive from a live OS. I recommend the Ultimate USB version 2.1 for this. The product is tagged here. Pause for a second and go check it out. It's pretty awesome. Another option would be to slave the drive off to another computer. Once you have the dump files downloaded, we now need an application to help us analyze them. Today I will be using the Windows Debugger, also known as WinDBG. Link is in the description if you need it. I have copied the dump files to my C drive, under Windows, and then Minidump. Launch WinDBG click on file and then open dump file. Click on browse, locate your dump file and click OK. If you know your architecture, which is usually going to be 64 bit, go ahead and choose it here. Now click on open. This will bring the dump file into the debugger. Give the application a moment to do its thing. Once the status bar at the bottom is no longer loading anything, it's time to analyze the file. You can do that by typing the command in, or easier yet, just click the hyperlink shown here. Again, allow the application a moment to complete its analysis. Now we have some real evidence to point to what the issue is. This debug line here shows what the issue is, or in other words, what the heck happened to make Windows puke on itself and blue screen. Now if we scroll down a bit, you'll see process name, which in this case is notmyfault64.exe, and shortly after that we find image name image name is the driver that caused this mess. Sure enough, myfault.sys, there it is. Uh, now that you know what is causing the blue screen of death, you can update, replace, or roll back that driver. Depending on how bad your case is, you might need to address this in safe mode or even from a bootable WinPE environment. In today's example, we looked at a blue screen dump file caused by a driver issue. Let me know if you would like to see us dig into other types of blue screen issues. If you found this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel. Both are absolutely free and it really helps us out. Thank you all for tuning in. Until next time, have a great day.